I'm Dr. Linda Gromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Today, we're going to look at a question of the week, and that question is, my parents were wondering, could I be intersex? Well, let's tell you about this patient. She is a young woman in her 20s. She had been assigned male at birth, but identified as female from a very young age, like preschool. She transitioned socially in elementary school. She had puberty blockers, both in the form of a Lupron and in the form of an implantable histrolin device when she was an adolescent. Um, she began on gender-affirming estradiol, so gender-affirming hormones, when she was about 13 or 14. And she she had her gender affirming vaginoplasty when she was age 19. So her parents were asking, is there any chance that I could have an intersex condition? And the, and the patient was wondering this also. And I asked, well, how has this come up? And she said that there was no particular reason. They were just curious. So before we get into definitions, I would say that it's not uncommon for people who are transgendered to ask this question. And sometimes we can do some testing to get some further information to clarify this situation. So how are gender dysphoria and intersex different? Well, let's go back. Transgender is where a person's gender identity differs from the sex they were assigned at birth, but their sex organs and every outward appearance of their genitalia is normal, so there has been no question about ambiguity of their genitalia. So we have a person who was assigned male at birth but identifies female is a transgender female, and likewise, a person who was assigned female at birth but identifies as male would be a trans male. A non-binary individual is a person who identifies as neither male nor female, but somewhere along a continuum, somewhere in between. So in general, here's what we find in real life. So you may have a transgender female who was born with a penis, testes, and presumably XY chromosomal makeup. Or you may have a trans male who was born with a vagina, a uterus, and ovaries, and presumably XX chromosomes. So remember, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in every cell with two exceptions. One is mature red blood cells have no nuclei, so they don't have chromosomes in them when they're mature. And then we have the egg and the sperm, the gametes, which each have 23 chromosomes. And at fertilization, these two components will combine to have a fertilized egg that has 46 chromosomes, 23 from the egg and 23 from the sperm, and that occurs at fertilization. Here's an example of the sex chromosome pair that's designated as female. That would be an XX chromosome. And on the right, we have a male with an XY chromosome pair. Now, why do I say presumably XX or presumably XY in the sex chromosome department? Well, that's because most persons, most of us have never had their chromosomes studied. So the test, which is called a karyotyping, costs between one and $2,000. So it's not a routine test to do, but there is a situation that's becoming more and more common. And that is where when a pregnant person has an amniocentesis, or a chorionic villus sampling during the pregnancy. And what they do in that situation is they take a little bit of fluid out and they analyze how many chromosomes would be found in each cell. So if a person has 46 chromosomes, but they have XY chromosomes, that would be male, XX would be female. So when you get a karyotyping done, when you have an amniocentesis or a CVS done, you learn how many chromosomes there are, what are the sex chromosomes, and you also learn variations such as, does a baby have trisomy 21 or Down syndrome where there's an extra chromosome number 21? So what is intersex? So intersex is kind of an umbrella term, and it is also called disorders of sex development. So this term applies to conditions where there's a congenital abnormality in either the internal and or the external genital structures. You may have heard the term ambiguous genitalia, where you really not may not be clear as to whether or not a baby is male or female, or their genitals 
just look different. Like, for example, you might have a very prominent clitoris that really looks like a penis. And these can be associated with gene differences, developmental programming, and hormone differences. Probably two of the more commonly known intersex variations deal with the number of chromosomes. And these would include Klinefelter syndrome, which has the chromosomal makeup XXY, or Turner syndrome, which has X and zero. So X without a second X or a Y chromosome. Additionally, some people may be identified as intersex at birth because of their genital appearance, later perhaps in puberty, or sometimes even when a fertility problem is identified and the person will, will be identified as having, for example, Klinefelter syndrome at that time. It is certainly possible that a person who has an intersex variation might have gender dysphoria. And this is a, a place where I think that there's a huge need for information and for education and reassurance for youth. And in fact, I came across an organization called Interact Advocates for Intersex Youth, and the reference is below. We'll also post that. So getting back to our patient, so I ordered a karyotyping test, which will most likely come back as 46XY. She did have typical appearing male genitalia when she was born. Now, remember, she had testicles which shrunk a little bit or didn't develop maybe as, as much as they would have because she was getting suppressive hormone estrogen during her adolescence. But after surgery, of course, her genital appearance is fully female and the hormone levels that she has in her bloodstream because of the hormones I'm prescribing are normal in the normal female range. The majority of transgender individuals are not intersex. For more information on disorders of sex development, I would refer you to the Accord Alliance, Interact, which I mentioned before, which is an advocacy organization for intersex youth, and the Intersex Society of North America. This is very interesting information, and I honestly will say I don't know that much about it, but I have enough information at least to get you started. I hope this information was helpful for you today. If you have a question that you would like to submit as a question of the week, please do so. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel and tell your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.